Good morning, true crime friends. Oh, don't start barking. The two of you. Mmm, these dogs. Okay, look. Hang on. Okay, look. It's a crisp fall morning here. <laughs> Ladies. Ladies. Okay. Come here, hi, hi. Come here. Come here. Come here. I always wonder, will it make a difference if I hold her while I, do? hi, hi, say hello to the people. Say hello, say hi. I am the very barky dog who is always barking in the background when my mommy is trying to talk about the nice true crime in the morning. She's an Escapoo. Everybody always asks me what her breed is. She's an Escapoo. That is an American Eskimo and Poodle and a little bit of Pomeranian and a whole lot of bark. Okay, so look. There is so much happening in the true crime world. First of all, Gareth, per do you want to get down? Do you want to, please don't bark at your sister. Daisy, come here, Daisy. No, no, no. Okay. This dog is a Yorkie poo. <laughs> this is Meet My Dogs Day here at Gossip Rumor and Innuendo, but I'm hopeful that they will shut the heck up so I can do the nice true crime. Okay, please, Daisy. I Okay, please don't fight. Please don't fight. It is a madhouse in my house this morning. I, I'm about to power through though. Okay, so look, there's a lot going on in true crime. Um, Gareth Purse House, that's the dude who unalived um, Amy Hardwick, who was also Drew Carey's girlfriend, fiance. But that's the least of what she was. Dr. Amy Hardwick was a renowned sex therapist helping sex workers do whatever i don't know how that works but whatever she was helping them and um her obsessed ex-boyfriend broke into her house and unalived her in a very very brutal fashion won't get into it because it's too early in the morning to be talking about that level of murderation so um he was convicted yesterday and i was like yes the, the jury came back with a verdict after nine hours something like that so we have a verdict there we had a sentencing in um the state of ohio versus sydney powell that's the bonked her mama in the head murder case child she bonked her mama in the head now she's going to the nervous hospital for like 15 to life so I don't think anybody ever makes parole the first time. So she's 25 now. She's going to be at least 40 years old when she gets out. Hopefully, they, the judge and the, um, the, the prosecution and the defense both ask that she be sent to some like special mental health facility that the state just put together down there in Marysville, Ohio. So hopefully she gets the help that she needs so that she can like calm herself. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen to young Sydney, but honestly, going to prison, in my humble opinion, is the best thing for her. Because like, girl, mm -mm, you're not supposed to bonk your mama in the head. That's really bad karma or chi or bad. It's, it's just bad. You can't be bonking your mom in the head. Um, I also think you might go to hell for that. But like, okay, whatever. But if she was mentally ill, maybe not. Do they have a nervous hospital in the hereafter? Do you need one over there? I don't unclear. Here's the thing though. Her attorney, Don Malarchik, who was super, super attached to her, was like, judge, you see me up here? Now look, words to these effect, because you know, I'm not quoting. That's not my gift. Um, He was like, judge, you see me up here arguing my behind off and doing my best, and she's going to need an appeal because we think there should be an appeal in this case, but um, they out of money. I I, I'm not free. I'm not out here doing charity work. So I would encourage you to um, appoint her an attorney because she's indigent and her family is like, yeah, nah, boo. We're going to make her a nice cake with some psychotropic meds in it to help her over there at the hospital. But um, we, we're not tricking up our, our 401k on this situation. We're going to miss her dearly, but we're just going to write her some letters from now on. So um, the family has been financially impacted by this as you would well imagine plus her meds plus her hospitalization plus whatever whatever now uh she goes on the state health plan which i guess is better she gonna get room and board and soft pillows and jello i don't i don't know what they're doing down there in marysville but i hope she gets the help she needs and they're gonna file an appeal but it's like you know the other people like not not the paid private lawyer who's like this is like my daughter but the person who's like mm-hmm 
Case number 764.32. Yeah, come on up here, girl. What's your situation? All right, fill out these forms. We're going to get back to you. So um, I don't know how well that appeal is going to go, but we're going to see. Look, Suzanne Morphew's remains have been found. This case. Okay, so I'm not sure how much you know about this case. Suzanne Morphew went disappear. She went missing like three years ago, right? On Mother's Day. And everything about this case looked like her husband had done it every single thing her bike was like over a mountain in a weird place and then the bike helmet was found in another location okay fine she had a spy pen who uses spy pens who uses pens but she had a spy pen that was all set up to record him because she thought he was up to some shenanigans and the spy pen recorded him in his car watching forensic files hmm why are you watching TV in your car? But okay, okay. Also, this spy pin uh, caught her having an affair. Oops. You trying to record him and you get caught having an affair? She had had a two-year affair that she had not told even her best friend about. Nobody knew about it except for the spy pin caught her in the act. Mm. Her lover was off in Michigan when this happened. She lives in Colorado. The day of the murder, the husband, now it was Mother's Day. He should have been home baking her breakfast in bed or doing whatever. The kids were off on a camping trip. And mothers, can we talk here? That's what you want on Mother's Day. Yeah. Mother's Day, I'll call it, don't call me Mother's Day. Like, leave me alone. You call my name all day, every day for the past 30 years. I'm going to need y'all to just give me a moment to have one of them Calgon take me away baths and dr drink a glass of cocoa or whatever it is I drink. If you a wine person, drink your wine. If you a lick, brown liquor person, br drink your brown liquor. Me, I just want a nice Starbucks and I want some nice true crime on the TV and I want y'all to leave me the heck alone. Happy Mother's Day to me. When my kids were little, I used to say to my husband, he was like, what do you want? I was like, for you to take them kids to the movies all day. So he would take them kids to the movies all day. And I would get some peace and damn quiet. Back in the day, it was just me and Daisy. Me and Daisy would just sit here. We would share a bowl of popcorn and we would watch some Lifetime or True Crime or something like that and enjoy a peaceful day. And then he would order dinner because I don't want none of his cooking, please and thank you. And then that was a Mother's Day. Don't make me breakfast in bed because y'all can't cook. And then you go spill it on my good sheets. No, thank you. Anyway, so it was Mother's Day. See, I brought it right on back around. Brought it right on back around. It was Mother's Day and um, she goes goes out on a bike ride and then disappears. And he had a lot of real suspicious behavior, including, but certainly not limited to, leaving the house on Mother's Day and then um, taking bags of garbage and depositing them all over town in various trash cans. Barry, sir, it's not looking good for you. And so I was like, okay, well, um, how long until Barry goes to jail? So the state like spends a year putting their case together. And they're like, okay, we have everything we need. And then he, you know, he hired a private defense attorney to come up with this defense. Cause I was like, this mama Luke done killed his wife. Now he like, who, me, what? I think a mountain lion got her. Okay, sir, a mountain lion. But apparently mountain lions are a thing in Colorado. And so um, the district attorney and the police or whatever, they did their investigation and they found some unknown male DNA in her car on her bike, somewhere near her. It was like, okay, who's this unknown male DNA? Oh, the unknown male DNA of a serial rapist. But they were like, I'm sure that means nothing. We gonna put that in the bottom of the file. But his private attorney was like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait. What, what, what is this we see here? What, what have we here? You got some, and you didn't tell me. Okay. So the judge is like, "Yeah, nah, you can't. Mm -mm. You, you can't do that." But the district attorney was like, "We are sure that she is in one of these mines near the back of their house." I am looking very like crazy professor this morning. I just noticed my hair is still up in a crazy knot. Anyway. Lord, you'd think I have ADHD. I actually don't. I'm just scattered in the brain. Anyway, so uh, the district attorney was like, they got all the mines behind their house because Colorado is like an old mining town with the silver mine and the gold mine. Why y'all still got mines? They still just open? You can just throw bodies down there? And they were like, as soon as the snow melts, we're sure it's going to be down there. We're going to find it. Then the snow melted and nobody. They were like, okay, 
we're going to pick another mine because we're sure he did it. Did anybody follow up on that unknown male DNA of the serial rapist? Okay, so it's the, the judge throws out the case with prejudice, which means they can bring it. Y'all can bring it if you get some more evidence. But right now, mm -mm, you're going to need some more evidence. And the district attorney was like, well, we are about to have that evidence any second now. And so we're going to put him back in jail. And the daughters were like, our father didn't do it. But aren't the daughters always like our father didn't do it? Because that just seems standard. Look. 45, 50 minutes away in a whole other county, in a whole other case, they are miss looking for a missing woman. And so they're like, here, woman, woman, look, they couldn't find her, right? They were like, mm, oh, bones. This probably this lady we're looking for. We got these bones. Let's go test the bones and see. So they test the bones and like, oh, not only is it not the lady we're looking for, it's Suzanne Morphew, not in a mine. In a, just in a wide open field. Who is throwing bodies in fields? That is lazy. But it was a remote field, but a field never, nevertheless. And the, the um, district attorney and everything was like, oh, wait a minute. Remember that serial rapist that we found in the, huh? Ha, 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 ha. Okay, we're going to have to reconsider. The, D, the district attorney was convinced that as soon as they had all the information, the day we're just going to tie this all up with a bow. Colorado, what y'all doing? What what are y'all doing? Because y'all are looking straight crazy. Me and Dateline and the whole true crime world was like, Barry Morphew, we know your name because you are a killer. Now we're like, oh, Barry Morphew, uh, were you planning on unaliving your wife? And then she happened to get kidnapped by a serial killer and unalived? That is like the worst luck in the world. Maybe you were not even planning on killing her. Maybe y'all were just going through a divorce because they were going through a divorce. And you had some suspicious trash bag usage. I need him to explain the trash bags to me. I mean, you could throw trash away wherever you want to throw trash away. But if it makes you laugh, it just, y'all have trash pickup at your house? Yeah, you, how come I don't? Okay, maybe he was throwing away evidence of a different crime. He was like, I've been making all this nice meth over here in the basement, but now they tried to get me from a wife's murder. I didn't murder anybody. I was just making meth or having an affair or doing some other illicit thing that y'all have proof of because I threw the trash in the trash. Like, I don't know. Um, Did he hire a serial killer to kill his wife? It'll be interesting seeing how this all goes together. I'm gonna need one of our tarot friends or our Sonia so, you know, with the with the with the tarot cards. Girl, you got anything? Let us know. Um, anyway, up oh, where's Reverend Donna Serafina Serafina Donna? She over there teaching classes, teaching people how to be psychic. K Donna, Reverend Serafina, whatever. I, all that seemed like a cra cash grab to me. But what do I know? Make your money, boot. But I'm looking at you with plenty of side eye. So, um, Miss Suzanne Morphew might have been killed by a serial killer. Shades of Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes? No, Shonda Levy. Chandra Levy. Lord, Shonda Rhimes wrote uh, Grey's Anatomy. I believe she is still alive and not the victim of a serial killer. I have just messed that up really bad. Shonda Levy, Chandra Levy, who was... Um, an intern down there in Washington, D.C., sleeping with the congressman. And then she goes missing. Everybody's like, Mr. Congressman. And he was like, I just boned an underage girl. I did not unalive her. It's like, sir, you mm -mm, say less, say less. So that situation is crazy and it's taken all kinds of twists and turns. I am perched waiting to see what happens in the Suzanne Morphew case. Cleveland? I see y'all Cleveland. You know how I know what's going on in Cleveland? Number one, the mainstream media has not seemed to pick it up. There's a whole bunch of missing kids down there in Cleveland, Ohio. Something like a thousand missing kids? Did I get that wrong? It's a whole bunch of them. It's a whole bunch of missing kids in Cleveland. And that story I found out from um, none other than Hood Gossip AK-47. AK was like, it's so many missing kids. I'm about to go on a missing persons hunt. They think these children may be disappearing as sort of a trafficking ring. That's horrible. But it's a whole bunch of missing kids down in Cleveland. Fan out. Have a look around. Spread the word. We need to find these kids. 
Wait, you can't be taking the babies. I mean, listen, you want to take some old people. We don't like that either. By old, I mean grown and over 18, not elderly citizens. But I'm just saying, mm-mm. Criminals, what, they just think they can just do whatever in Cleveland. Nobody going to pay attention. The internet is paying attention. Even if the police are not paying attention, child, folks are out here and we have cameras and we have iPhones and we keeping an eye out for you. Lock up your kids, Cleveland. They are not safe. In other kid news, this boy in a box trial. What in the world is happening? So these are the facts of the detail. These are the details of the case that I know so far, which you know me is probably not that much. So these people in what state were they in? I don't remember where they live, but they moved you to a new house. Okay, congratulations to you on your new house. And they were like, listen, we have this one car garage and we want to build an office. And the contractor was like, okay, it's only a one car garage. Why don't you just make the whole garage the office? But sure, I'll build an eight by eight room for you. They're like, great, great, great. It's looking good. Thanks so much. Can you put a ceiling on it? And he was, the contractor was like, okay, um, why you need a seal? Oh, okay, fine. So he builds an eight by eight box with a ceiling, no windows. Okay, poor choice for office, but okay, fine. And they were like, Greg, Greg, the, can, a door? And he was like, sure, of course, a door. They, can you make a hole for a camera? And he was like, mm, what kind of office y'all got? And then he was like, okay, and put the locks on the outside. He said he was driving home with his little helper. He was like, wait, Something about this does not seem right. Let me, 911. Hello, police. It's some suspiciousness going on. Now, well, you know he went to that check clear though, right? He was like, let me let me check my bank statement. Okay, check has gone through. Hello, 911. Mm. It's some people over here building a box in their garage. I don't know what they do. It looks suspicious to me. And the cops were like, thanks for your call. Uh, we're going to log this and get back to you. And then um, the mother calls the police and was like, my son has gone missing. And they were like, oh me, oh my. Okay, let's look around the house. Maybe he's under a bed or in an attic or something like that. Remember Balloon Boy? He was in the attic. They, the cops were like, let's look around. Oh, we don't. He's not here. We looked under the bed. We fluffed the pillows, everything. We, we don't see. Why, why y'all got a box in the basement? With, with, I mean, a box in the garage with a mattress and a bucket-like toilet. Mm. Did it? Did the did the bucket at least have one of them pool noodles around it like you do when you're camping? You know I don't camp, but I have Pinterest. So you take like a bucket from Home Depot and you put a pool noodle around the edge so it's at least comfortable. So you're just not squatting out like you out here in a field or something. What? And who's emptying that bucket? Ew. Anyway, was there toilet paper? I have questions. Anyway, so... um. He, she was like, my son is missing. And then the son turns up at his middle school the next day. Hmm? He was missing, but he went to school. Okay. So they were like, hey, young man, you're missing. Um, anything you want to tell us? And he spills everything. And so the cops are like, right, 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 right. They talk to the siblings and the siblings are like, mm -hmm. the box boy, what he said was true. Turns out this young man is adopted. How, why are people adopting kids just to be mean to them? Like, you, I don't, this makes no sense. You didn't, nobody is forcing you to adopt. You could just not adopt. If you want to abuse a child, like, well, you shouldn't be abusing anybody, child, animal, humans, nothing. You should not be abusing anybody or anything. But you adopt a child, that, that makes no sense to me. So they were like, oh, he has attachment reactive disorder, whatever. Okay. I thought that, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that only happens with kids you get from like another country. They grew up in an orphanage. Nobody held them as babies. So now like your affection, they see as harm, whatever. I don't, I don't know how it works. You're not here for facts. You're here for gossip. If you want to know about attachment reactive disorder, um, Google or something, because not me. Anyway, I know it's shocking to you. I am not a medical professional. I know. I'm surprised too. Anyway, so... um. They got this boy in a box. The kids corroborate what the what the boy has said. The mother told all kinds of lies to the police. The husband was like, I want home. It wasn't me. I don't know what you want from me. And so um, the trial was supposed to start. And the, it's, the sentence could be like a couple of months to many years in prison. But since they've never been in trouble before, likely it was only going to be a few years in prison if they got convicted. The district attorney offered the father, first of all, the father was like, I would like to sever my trial from that half because, uh-uh, she lied to the police. I was not home. What it got to do with me? And I was like, okay, see what y'all doing here. Hmm. Something tells me a divorce is afoot, but they're going to stay married so they don't have to testify against each other. 
gotcha. I see the play you running. And then the, the guy was like, and I'm not going to take that plea deal to 24 months, which tells me um, he thinks he can beat this at trial. Okay. He's going to be like, it was her. It was her. Had nothing to do with me. So I'm keeping an eyeball on that case to see what happens next. But last but certainly not le least, um, Russell Lafitte or was it Corey Fleming? One of them Murdoch dudes that's going to jail, federal prison. Liz, Liz, why, how come Liz's last name has got Liz Farrell, superhero, Liz Farrell, colleague of Mandy Matney. Liz is the Robin to Mandy's Batman, was reading all the rules associated with, I think it's Corey Fleming's prison sentence. So I put, put the schedule up there. You know how you can tell this is federal prison? They have a coffee hour. Since when does prison have a coffee hour? I bet you they serve Starbucks at the at the federal prison. They're like, yeah, you could put your pinky out. You could just get yourself a nice flat white during coffee hour. Prison coffee hour? Hmm. Okay. I went over there on the Twitter and I read the entire schedule. And while, again, I would not want to be a part of it, if you have to do prison, seems like that's where you want to go. I want to go to the coffee hour prison. Is there a knitting class? Can I, do they have yoga? Can I like do a morning stress and some, stretch and some asanas and stuff? Is there a pool? I might need to swim laps. I, hmm. Again, I do not want to go to prison because I think the thread count on the sheets is going to be all wrong. And the company that you keep, well, probably not that good. Although they're probably very, very smart except for they got caught. So you want to avoid the getting caught part of the whole prison thing. Anyway, um, I'm just intrigued by the coffee hour. And I are there donuts? Will there be pastries? I, hmm. Ooh, a nice crumbly cookie. Most people like soft cookies. Ooh, I hate a soft cookie. I love a crunchy cookie that you can dip in something. It's not going to fall apart. Like a ginger snap or a lemon snap. Ooh, now I want snaps. Okay, look. I need to go do my yoga stretching. It's yoga stretch day. Did I swim yesterday or was that the day? Oh, maybe I'll swim today. Oh, and you know what else? In Craft Corner, not that y'all asked, but I'm gonna tell you since you're here. It's fall and so I'm knitting apples. This is an unstuffed apple. I'm doing green apples, I'm doing red apples and I'm making them on my Addy. Y'all got an Addy, you know about Addy? This is my knitting machine, child, I don't knit. I mean, I knit, but I knit on an Addy. My Addy Express, see, helps me knit real fast. I taught myself to knit during the pandemic. And by knit, I mean knit on a machine that I imported from Germany because that is what you do when you're bored and have extra extra money during the pandemic. I hope you had a good pandemic. I learned to knit apples and mittens and a bunch of other stuff. Okay, look, get on with the rest of your day. You have things to do. The dogs didn't bark the whole time or squeak any toys. Maybe the key is letting them get on camera first thing and then they can shut the hell up so I can make my video. Okay, y'all have a great day. I'm gonna see you at lunchtime, True Crime, for Deadly Dentist Week. Oh, I love the Deadly Dentist. I'm so excited about the Deadly Dentist. Okay, you have a great day and I will see you later. Bye.